Greeting friends and family here on YouTube. Today I'm reposting a video that I did May 6th of 2012. The reason for the video was to hopefully bring awareness to the catastrophic events that have happened and could happen given the technologies that we are utilizing here in our world today. Technologies that are not needed. And I say that very clearly, not needed. Tesla proved that there were alternative energies that we could utilize. Energies that were not only clean, but they were safe for all living things. To the survivors that exist beyond this date, if you have found this, then all is not in vain. Someone did survive. The year is 2032 AD, and I believe it is March but I am not sure. To the listeners, please bear with me, as it is hard to concentrate and breathe while speaking. I can only hope that my errors receive this message sometime in the future. My apology to those that have survived. We are all one family, you see. All human race is one family. We know this now. Sad. We did not know it then. There would have been no wars had we known we were killing family, maybe. I am or was a very important part of your lives. I was a vessel that brought through generations before me your life into being. I am, was, or would have been your great-grandmother. My name is Ray. I dwell within the earth, a cave deep beneath your surface with a very small number of survivors who thought we were the lucky ones. We thought um, ourselves lucky because we had survived, but this is not living. If it is, it is hell and we were surely damned. I do this hoping that blood of my blood has somehow survived and that things have improved on the surface of Earth. I relay this to say that we, my generation and the generations before me, are so sorry. Ignorance is not bliss. I dreamed of great things in my life and for yours. I wanted the world you live in to be as beautiful as it could be. Beauty like the places I visit in my memories that were laid on canvas by brushes of great artists. Colors vibrant and breathtaking those from every spectrum of the imagination. I wanted you to taste the finest of cuisine, fruits that actually grew on trees and vegetables of every kind, sprouting up from Mother Earth, being fed real sunlight from our golden sun, rainwaters from the sky above, 
fresh and clean. These are things of the past. Most likely never to be in your time. The murderers, those that planned this or lied to us about the dangers, told us that everything was under control. Lies, all lies. They are responsible for the loss of billions of lives. Trusting people who had not a clue what was really happening. Yes, billions of people have perished. Crazed scientists, as I call them, they had to be crazy setting it loose, knowing what they knew. They created an invisible weapon that no one could see that was for war at first. Then they mastered it for energy sources called radiation, nuclear industry, a monstrous poison that could easily be released without warning and could not be controlled even by those that designed it. They convinced the ignorant population that it was a need rather than the curse that it was. As life went on in what had become our normal, we walked together with the invisible murderer inhaling and absorbing its poison without even knowing, though we should have known the truth was everywhere, right in front of our eyes. Truth is we chose to ignore, perhaps hoping against hope that we could dodge the beast until Chernobyl, we knew then the consequences of using the beast, but no one stopped the insanity. Those in control just insisted that everyone was safe and it was needed, no matter the facts, the pictures, or the proof. Many people tried to warn us. Even a few scientists and people who specialized in the invisible poison, but no one wanted to believe them. Few could fathom the crime against humanity as being real. But it was. It is real. The skies here are darkened by ash and debris from several catastrophic disasters, of which most were created by mankind. Many destroyed our waterways, water that once was clear and sparkling clean, sweet and refreshing to our tongues, became so polluted. This was achieved through an exchange made by greedy men for their love of natural gases and the ever-growing lust for energy. Waters that ran free in every corner of this planet Earth are now visibly ridden with smut and goo from chemicals that bubble up like demons from the Earth below. No longer are there waterfalls that glow and shine like crystals. The putrid smell of the waters left now make disgusting every breath we take and never can it cross our tongue lest we die. Man did this. The government knew it and allowed it. 
part of their agenda, I suspect. Another poison for the useless eaters of the world. Another way to downsize the population. It worked well. Scientists have been able to alter our DNA so our bodies do not need as much water to exist. Had they not, I too would have ceased to live but would not have been able to share with you this truth. Much like the Frankenstein things they did to our food before the Black Day with their genetically modified organisms, also known as GMO. They have now altered us. The GMO foods did so much harm, and we began to realize that it was too late for many. Perhaps this alteration to our DNA has caused harm too, but for now, we need less water to sustain life. We first noticed big problems after the catastrophic fallout created by the Japan nuclear power plants that were destroyed. Destroyed by, well, they say it was natural but there were those that claimed, and proof was out, that evildoers used high-tech set of antennas to cause the great earthquake, a massive quake that led to the tsunami that destroyed the nuclear plant, a power plant, which polluted the great ocean and our air. This was the start of the catastrophic life change known as the extinction event. Anyway, as I was saying, we first noticed a change in the mutation of plants and flowers. From there began the ca cancers and the deaths. The human mutations started showing in babies horrible mutations. Those in charge or in control we called government refused to disclose truth and few people believed that worse was yet, yet to come. The time was limited unless we stood up and made them accountable for their crimes against us people such as myself were called conspiracy theorists. We called ourselves truthers. We tried so hard to help people know the truth, hoping that people would all band together to make change for the good of all. But I guess we failed. Too many people slept through what was happening. So many just refused to see the truth until it was too late. Life did change. It changed in the worst possible ways. Short of immediate death, though death in some cases became a blessing, I would say. Working in the underground facility I sometimes daydream of what surface of Mother Earth once was. I am taken back to my childhood, where I ran and played all day. I swam in creeps, creeks. I'm sorry, I'm tired. I swam in the creeks, chasing minnows, which were little fish. Fish were creatures that lived in our waters. They were one of our great food sources. Mighty good, too. Some of them were. They are extinct now, 
due to the radiation that was dumped in our oceans and seas by men that gave no thought to what it would do to one of the greatest food sources in the world. After that, things just got so much worse. Radiation was everywhere, in our rain, in our snow, in our food, and yes, even accumulating daily in our bodies. A beast you could not see, could not taste, and could not feel until it was too late. So people denied it, denied the truth. We were in big trouble. The surface became a dust bowl where dust devils carried radiation and other poisons deep into everything living. There was no way to hide from it. The atmosphere was destroyed. The sun became an enemy to all mankind. I can remember clearly when I wasn't afraid of the sun. The sun warmed the earth and felt so good, except on very hot days. Those were the days that we would go swimming in the brisk, cooling waters of creeks and lakes. I wish you could do the same. I truly do. It was such great fun. The air I breathed was even clean enough, though somewhat destroyed by the ones before us that I did not choke and faint when trying to breathe the surface air. I could laugh and sing, and I did. Today, breathing is a labor, and if we were to breathe the air on the surface of Earth, we'd surely die. The daydreams are much nicer than reality. The facility where I work is trying to grow food sources beneath the earth. Man has made some, though little, progress in this venture. It seems to me that without the sun, they are very hard coming, these foods. They are just never going to get it quite like it used to be. The foods they have managed to grow, do not taste right, and the textures are foreign to all of us. Something is definitely lacking. The seeds they use are a hybrid type that man had altered with their genetic modifications of organisms, GMOs, uh, before the Black Day disasters. They are supposed to grow foods that are bigger and better, but they do not. Of course, they do not get much water as the water system for feeding the plants here now is a combination of human waste and condensation. The air is always stuffy and humid down here. No matter what we do, it still we exist. The troubles were many in my time on Earth. Man was unsettled, greedy, and lacking good morals. The government was corrupt and against the people, rather than for the people. Because of this, our world, as we knew it, was destroyed. People could not see that all they needed to do was to stand up for what was right we needed to stand up against the greed, the governments that allowed the destruction and the lies they told. Those that kept secrets that prevented the awakening because so many re people refused to believe that the powerful ones would actually be against the common people. But we know now firsthand it was true. We should have 
for the goodness of Mother Earth and each other demanded change while we still had a chance, but we did not. Small groups would join together trying to bring forward an awakening to the common coming disasters, warning of the end of life as we knew it, only to be called conspirators and crazy. Many were prosecuted or worse, they just disappeared. Some, too many, far too many, were killed, but it was called suicide by those responsible. So many that knew and tried to show us. So many. Too bad we did not get it. It was as if Unless the effects of the radiation or mutated food touched a person intimately, they just did not believe. They did not want to hear, and if they did not see it, they did not believe it. Who would want to, in their right mind, see such travesty? Those that were touched by disease and death began to realize. But... If you could fight back by then, it was too late. I was one of a small group of caring people that devoted my time to begging others to help, to pay attention, to spread the word, to cut back, oh, helping to relax the energy grid, to make small but very significant sacrifices for the good of all mankind, but few would really listen. We needed to stop all nuclear usage in any form. The government began making laws and bills to silence all of us, trying to shut us up. They even went so far as to accuse truthers of crimes, placing them under arrest of, well, many just disappeared or died suddenly. I do not need to tell you how angry that made people. The rest is history. We are now, because of natural and man-made disasters, living underground without clean water to drink, fresh air to breathe, nor ample food sources no luxuries, not even electric appliances that no one wanted to give up. And television, well, that is a thing of the past. However, the massive population drop put a big dent in the need for big grids of man-made energy. In fact, there is no longer any natural gas fracking, no oil drilling, and no nuclear power. No need for those things any longer. I can only hope that these things, these changes, have helped your world. I hope Mother Earth has somehow survived atop on the surface better than we and that she heals. I must end this and rest. The radiation has started invading our caves by way of a massive dust storm or of massive dust storms, many, on the surface of Earth. Some of us are not faring very well. I love you though I never got to meet you. I do hope there is a you. Take care. With love for all mankind, your great-grandmother, Ray.